Hey everybody, I'm sure back with another JavaScript coding video. Today's problem uh, will be a little bit different. It won't be at a bite. We're going to be doing a problem from the daily coding problem, which is a website. And if you sign up for their, for their service, what they do, they send you daily coding problems into your mailbox every day. So they're actually a pretty, pretty cool service. Um, a lot of their, a lot of their, their problems are actually used and asked at some of these top um, tech companies. So yeah, it is actually pretty, pretty good. And I do find these problems pretty helpful to kind of go through. So yeah, we're going to be doing, doing this today. Uh, yeah, let, let's get into it. So it says, given an array of integers in which two elements appear exactly once, and all other elements appear exactly twice, find the two elements that appear only once. For example, given this array, you would return four and eight. And it says the order does, does not matter. So we have this array, right? Two elements appear exactly once so is it is it this one nope because we already have another two in here is it four yeah the, it, we can it is four because four doesn't appear again inside this array then we go to six is six somewhere else in the array in this array it is so it's not that one so we skip that go to eight is it eight does eight appear somewhere in this array it doesn't so we're gonna we're gonna you know put eight with four as the two that I've only showed up once. Then we go to 10, is 10, else, uh, 10 in this array? It is, so it's not that one. Two, does two appear somewhere else in this array? It does, so that is also a duplicate. And then six, six appears also in this array. That is a duplicate and 10, 10 is also a duplicate. So we're going through this array and we're trying to uh, isolate only the numbers that show up once in the array, and that is only four and eight. Cool. So that's that's the problem. So I think um, understanding it and putting it in your own words is something that, that is um, helpful. So again, I've drawn it out, the array, drawn the array out and highlighted four and eight because four and eight are the only ones that appear once inside this array. So what are some ways that we could we could tackle this? Well, we know we need to iterate through the array and we need, to, we need to figure out a way to keep track of the duplicates and the ones that are not duplicates. So we can, we can do that through, through maybe a data structure, right? So one that comes to mind is maybe using an object whose underlying data structure is a dictionary. Um, if you, if any of you have used Python, I'm sure you, you know you've come across a dictionary before. So yeah, we can we can use a dictionary. Right? We can use a, a, an object, and inside this object, right, we have key value pairs. So what we can do, we can iterate through this array, and as we're iterating through each single one, right, we can keep track of the number of times that each number shows up. So we start with the first one. So the first one is two. We're going to add two as our key inside of this um, object. And then the value will be the number of times that it's currently appeared. So when we're at the beginning, we're iterating. We're like, all right, two's appeared once. So we're going to put a one next to it. And then we go to the next one, we're like four. All right, four. First time we've come across four, we're going to look inside of this object and we're going to say, hey, is four anywhere here? Nope, it's not. So we're going to add four and we're going to put the number of, of occurrences, the, the, the value here, we're going to add that as one. Go to the next one, we're like, hey, six, is six somewhere in here? Nope, it's not. So we're going to add it and put the number of occurrences to one. Same thing with, with eight. We're going to look, is eight in here? Nope. So we're going to add it and we're going to add the number of occurrences to one. And yep, 10, same thing. We're going to look at, is 10 in here? It's not. So we're going to add it number of occurrences to one. And then two, two, we're gonna look inside of our, our object. We're like, hey, is two somewhere in there? 
hey, it is in here, two's in here. We do have a key with the value two. And so we're gonna add another one to the value here to show that now, now the number of occurrences now have gone to two. All right, and then we're gonna go to the next one, six. Is six somewhere in here? Hey, there is a six in here. Cool. So we're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna add a one to show that the number of occurrences now is two for six. And then we're gonna go to 10. Next one, the last one, we're like, hey, 10 is also in here. So the number of occurrences for this one also goes to 10, uh, to two, sorry. Uh, let me see if I can, uh, let's go and move this down. All right, so this occurrence is now, we've seen 10 again, so this occurrence will now be two. All right, so, so yeah, that, that's what we wanna do, right? We wanna go through the array and we wanna keep track of the number of occurrences inside of an object where the keys are the, num are the numbers inside this array and the value, the values are going to be the number of occurrences that that particular element or that key has shown up inside the array. And then, so this would be the, the first thing we're going to do, right? The second thing we want to do is once we've gone through the array, then we want to iterate through this object, right? We want to iterate through the object. So iterate through our object and an identifier the occurrences that have only happened once. Occurrences of one. Right, so we wanna we wanna identify the occurrences where there's only one, right? Where that element has only showed up once in the array, okay? And then what we can do is maybe we can, once we've identified it, then what we could do is just add it to, to an array of some sort because the, the order doesn't matter. So, you know, we would add four and eight to the array and we will return that. Now, the question doesn't say, it just says return four and eight. It doesn't say it could be in an array, it could be in a string, like it doesn't matter, right? So, so yeah, so that's, that's our plan, right? So the final step, let's just put it here. Add single frequencies, frequencies to array. All right. So, so this is this is our problem. This is what we want to do, right? Uh, the first step. The first step would be to iterate through the array, right? It would be iterate through the array, and then we want to add and keep track of all the occurrences in the array into a data structure and we're going to say just use a simple object right so we're going to put it into the object and we're going to keep track of the frequencies second step is we want to iterate through the object and we want to identify just the single occurrences and once we've identified the single occurrences we're going to add them into an array and return that array okay so so that's our plan that's what we want to do so yeah, let's, let, let, let's try to make an attempt to, to code this up. But if we were in an interview and if you kind of walk through this process, um, I think that would, would give you a lot of points.
So, so yeah, just, just being able to walk through this and identify what's going on, understand the problem, understand the steps of how to go about solving this. Um, the interviewer would see this and then they would, you know, they would, they would let you know if you're going off track, they would give you hints. And so doing this first before you get into the code is actually a very valuable thing to do. So please do this before writing any line of code. All right, so let's let's get into the coding part. So we have our function. This is our array, right? So let, let's uh, let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to iterate through the array, and then we want to add it to our object, right? We want to keep track of the, the occurrences on those numbers and how many times they've occurred. So we want to let's let's do. Let's instantiate our object first. Okay. And then we want to iterate over the array and keep track of counts of numbers by adding to our data, uh, adding to our object. do this in comments because in an interview you're nervous a lot of things going on so just being able to you know repeat exactly what you're going to do even in code it just keeps you on track so always always good thing to do right so the next thing we're obviously going to iterate all right So we're going to do right, and then we're going to say, "Hey, if if the key, right? If 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 it if the key if 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 it doesn't exist, if, if nothing exists within here, so if there is no 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 key, no no key value there, then we want to add it. And we want to put the occurrence of that to to one, right? Okay." Right, so in our array, if, so if, if, if inside of here, if the value inside of that is more than zero, then we wanna, we wanna add the key value pair to the array. Array five. equals to t at array of i plus one. All right, so that what this would do is if we're seeing if we're seeing a new number for the first time, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add it. We're gonna add the, the value, we're gonna add it, we're gonna add the key. And the value, we're just going to add one to it. Okay. Otherwise, if it already exists inside the array, then we want to just increment the one. All right. All right, so, so hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully that makes, that makes sense. So, so yeah, so like, let me, let me just comment this out maybe, right. Um, actually, let's add this to one, this should actually be, this should actually be one. Yeah, so I actually got it back, so if, if, if um, if the number already exists inside inside our object, 
and then add frequency. Right. So this is if the number already exists in this in the inside our object. We're going to increase the we're going to add one to that frequency. One to the frequency. And down here, we're going to say if it doesn't exist. So if the number is not inside the object. In other words, this would be a new number that we're adding. New number we're adding. Okay. So if it's a new number inside of our object, we're going to go and add the key and then the value we're going to add to one. If it already exists inside the array, right? So if, 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 the, if the value the frequency is, is more than one, then what we're going to do, we're going to update the frequency uh, and we're going to increment it by one. All right, cool. So we've done that. So that's the first step, right? This is our first step we've just done. Remember the set, and the second step is we're going to iterate now through the object and we're going to identify the occurrences of just one. So we're going to identify, we're going to look at the, 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 the value pair and the key value pair. We're going to look at, we're going to see all the occurrences that, that have just been in there once. So only the numbers that only showed up once showed up once. We're going to identify those. And then we're going to add them to this array, to an array and return it. Okay. So here we want to iterate with a to t object and add single number occurrences only to how let's just say count array single count array. So let's instantiate our array. Then generate our object, which has our, which shows the number of frequencies for each number. So we're going to use let key in loop t. Right. So we're using the for in loop. So the for in loop is the way. Is the for is a for loop that you know that you use to iterate over object object keys. Um, regular for loop, obviously we have, and then you know this is another for in loop, and then we also have a for of loop that just iterates over each individual item inside of an array or a string without the index or the i. So there's three three types of of, of loops we could we could use, but the, for the for the objects. Using a for in loop uh, is, is the one is the one to use. All right, so for let that key, so for every single key inside of our inside of our object, we're going to say if if the key if the occurrence is exactly one. Then we want to add it to our array, right? Okay. Cool. So this is going to add all the single occurrences into into our array. Cool. So I think I think that's it. And then obviously um, we want to then so once all the single occurrences are inside of it, we want to return we want to return our array. Right. We're going to return our single count. Cool. All right, let's um, let's try to run this. Okay, so we have two, four, six, eight, and ten. Yeah, so there's that. So it looks like there's actually a, a mistake going on here that I made. Instead of being greater than one, it should be greater than zero. Um, 
yeah and we can we can see that let's let's do let me comment this out um, well let's let's console log it one let's let's put this back to one all right so so it looks like the number of occurrences is never is never updating. So why stay at one, right? Because because here, so down here is where this is where we instantiate a new a new number. Like if it if the number is not already inside, it's going to add it. Right, great, that's fine. But here we're saying if it's if the number itself, the number of occurrences is greater than one, and It'll never be greater than one because it's, it's, we're always going to instantiate one. So it's never going to be greater than one. So we need to change this to to zero. That way, we know at least if the bucket there's something already in the bucket, like that number has already occurred once before, right? But there's something in the bucket. Then we're going to add one to it, right here. With one with one before it was just one here so we were assuming there was always going to be one in the bucket and that and that and that like it need, the, the value needed to be more more than one which like we would never have entered this block of code that way so by set by by having this greater than zero we're saying okay like there needs to be something in the bucket there needs to be at least an occurrence in there. Otherwise, if there isn't an occurrence, then we're gonna we're gonna instantiate one. Okay, so now when we do this, okay, we get it. We get the occurrences. And if we were to add, let's say inside of here, let's say another 10. Okay, then it would update. So we have three occurrences. So so yeah, that was that was the, the mistake that I made. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, some of you were able to catch that. But uh, but yeah, no no harm done. It's always good to check as we're going along, and console login is always is always a good thing. Um, cool. So let's let's get rid of that. And so now we have our our array tracking the number of occurrences for each single number. Right, next thing we're doing is we're pushing the individual occurrences. So the individual occurrences, we're pushing the individual occurrences being this and this. So four and eight, and we're pushing that to, to our array here. Okay, cool. And let's see if this runs and we're able to get Illegal return statement. Uh, oh, is it because? Okay, I forgot to. Yeah, we want to be within the function, right? So, sweet. So now we have our array of four and eight, of this, which has a single occurrence in it. In it. Cool. So I think that's that's our problem. I think that's that's um. That's it, right? We we're, we were supposed to return four and eight. Um, you know, I think returning an array is totally fine. Doesn't matter which order. Um, yeah, then it says, can you do this in linear time and constant space? So let, let's take a look at that. So, so let's see. So time complexity is given the number of inputs, given like the input that we have. As, the, as, as those inputs get larger and larger and larger, like how does it affect the performance or, or the output of the function that's running? So here, right, we're iterating over the array that's given to us. So this array, we're iterating through the array one time, right? We're iterating through each single array, every single item in the array, we're adding it to to our object. So we're doing that once. So even if uh, the array length got really big, we'll still be going through that array n number of times where n is the length of the array. 
So we know this block of code here, as n increases, this will always, um, you know, the, the output will be linear in accordance with the input. So as n grows, the performance of, 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 of the output within the function will grow linearly uh, in accordance with n. So we know this is linear, right? Now, we also have another function, another uh, loop here as well. And in this loop, what we're doing is we're iterating through our object. We're iterating through every single one, every, every one of our objects. Right, let's actually do object T just to make it a little bit more visual. Okay. So this is our object, right? So this is, this is our object. So we're iterating through our object the same amount of times as we're iterating through our array, right? Because we're, we're iterating, we're trying to look for that single occurrence. So we're going have, having to go through every single key inside of this object. So this would also be O of n, right? As the number, because where n is the length of the length of the object. And the length of the object is exactly the same as the length of the array. Now, if the object itself was a different length, then we would denote this as, as m because the lengths would not be the same. And so we have O of n here for this loop. We have O of n when in this loop. And so we know time complexity of this would be O of n. Okay. Well, specifically, it would be, you know, we're looking at like O of n up here plus O of n here, right? That's like 2n, two, 2 O of n, right? And we can we can get rid of the constants, and so it would just be O of n, right? Now, what about the space? Well, space. We have our object, right? That we're caching, and the object itself. We're populating the object with with you know, like our array with our, with our array elements, right? So the array elements are being populated into this object and we're just counting the, the number of occurrences. And so the, 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 the space complexity uh, would also be all of n because of that, right? Where n is the length of the array. So the space would also be all of n on this, okay? Cool. Hopefully, um, hopefully that that problem made sense. Um, and yeah, and you found it helpful. Yeah, remember the propor the proportional amount of the space as a number of elements in the array. So space is proportional to the amount of elements in the array. And so yeah, that's why it's O of n. So both space and time complexity on this is O of n. Um, yeah. Yeah, let me know if, uh, if anybody has any questions. Now, if you wanted to, you know, make this, you know, a little bit more efficient, you could, you could actually use, um, and we won't, we won't get into it, but like you could, you could actually find uh, the unique numbers, the single unique numbers that we were, that we were looking for. You could actually do that um, and, and get and get those from the list of duplicate numbers we have here by by using um, by using XOR or XOR and all the numbers together. So XOR basically takes it takes the numbers and it converts it to binary and it compares those two numbers together. So if you have a binary one and binary zero for another number, 
And then XOR would, would take both of those, compare both of those, and it would return a one. So if it was a one or a zero, it would return one. If it's all ones or all zeros, it will return zero. So you're able to, so we, we can do that. And by doing that, like we're, we're canceling out all the duplicates by doing that, by converting the numbers to binary and XOR in them, we could, um, all the duplicates will cancel out and we'll end up getting the XOR two numbers that we're actually looking for. Um, so, so yeah, but we won't, we won't get into that today. But uh, I'll let um, I'll let I'll let everybody kind of uh, explore that on their own. But uh, yeah, hopefully you found this helpful. Um, give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel, and yeah, I'll see you all next time. Bye.